Round number two here on Beyond the Cage, presented by Intimidation Clothing. I am Jim Graham, and inside of round number two, brought to you by our good friends at MMAforlife.ca, we have a very special guest joining us. He is UFC fighter Darren Crookshank. Darren, thanks for coming back on the show. Uh, thanks for having me, guys. Well, looking back at your last fight, Darren, you fought John Badesky, and unfortunately you weren't able to win in that one, but what were you able to take away from that fight? Uh, as far as that fight uh, with John Medeski, you know, I, I really, you know, learned that I have to go after people. I can't, I can't wait for people to come at me, and I just have to put pressure on people. You know, Medeski was a, a real defensive fighter, and you know, it's it's hard to to fight people that that don't come at you. So, um, you know, I just uh, took a step back and got back to my roots, did a little bit more wrestling. And, uh, more than what I normally get into, uh, you know, I, I wrestled in college and I kind of got away from it once I started training mixed martial arts. Since we both live in Michigan, Darren, we've had a lot of very hot days recently. On days like those, does that impact your training either positively or negatively at all? I love the warm weather. It's, I, you know, I, I, I don't know, uh, what I do during the winter, I, you know, I do a lot of tanning because I get I get uh, depressed from it. But the warm weather, the hot sun, I I love that. It, I feed from it. I'm kind of like Superman. Since we last talked to you before your fight against John Medeski, has there anything uh, special you've been up to? Actually, uh, I'm actually putting up a program together right now. I teach at three different gyms right now, but uh, coming August after this fight, I, I'm a uh, me and. Uh, Cody Stamen and Jason Fisher were starting our own program at Detroit Jiu Jitsu. Um, you know, we haven't figured out, we haven't locked down our name yet, so I'm not going to really say it yet, but, um, it's going to be, it's, that's, that's the, uh, the next step in, in my career. Do you already have a location, uh, for this new team yet? Yeah, it's in Dearborn, right off Michigan and Schaefer. Uh, it's at Detroit Jiu Jitsu Academy. Uh, okay, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Good deal. I'll definitely have to uh, look into that. And uh, when you get uh, everything nailed down for that, I definitely have to come and uh, check it out. We can definitely uh, put some pictures or maybe some video uh, for our YouTube channel for that. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, Darren, uh, looking at your training camp, I know you kind of mentioned you were working on some of your wrestling after the John Medeski fight, but is there anything else you've been focused on for this training camp for Eve Edwards? Well, Eve Edwards, uh, you know, it's a short notice fight. Uh, I. I was getting ready for a fight. I didn't have anything locked down, but I knew I was going to be fighting soon, uh, you know, because I, I just had that loss, and I kept bugging, uh, you know, uh, Joe Silva to put me in. Like, I want to fight. I want to fight soon as fast as possible, da 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 And he came back with a short-notice fight against Eve Edwards. Uh, Eve Edwards' opponent ended up getting injured, and uh, I was the... Uh, I was given the opportunity, and I, I took it, so let's, let's do this. Have you taken fights on short notice in your career before, Darren? Here's the thing. I'm an upcoming fighter, and that's really the only way I'm going to have opportunities. This, in my, where I'm at, I have to be ready, you know, two, three weeks out, shape all the time, because that's when the big opportunity is going to come. You know, I, I'm not a big name yet. I don't get six six week notice that often. Even before the before the Ultimate Fighter, all of my fights were three, four week notice, not even, you know, sometimes uh two weeks. And that's kinda what made my career. You know, I, I do really well under pressure like that and you know, I'm constantly training. I'm always ready. You know, this is a sport that I love to do. If I didn't do mixed martial arts, if I didn't train every day, I would probably just sit at home and look at the wall. Like I, there's nothing else. So I'm not one of those guys that after a fight, takes a month off, does nothing. I'm basically back in the gym that week. Uh, not necessarily training hard for me, but, you know, I, I like to uh, get everybody else ready for their fight. You know, I, I feel this is uh, this is what I do. This is what I do every day. In your division, the lightweight division, TJ Grant had to drop out of his title fight due to a concussion that was supposed to be on August, and he has gone on to say that he isn't guaranteed a title shot upon his return to training. And I was wondering, as a fighter, if you were in his situation, knowing that he isn't guaranteed a shot upon his return, would that sit well with you? 
Well, for me, you know, it's it's not necessarily about getting a title shot or anything like that. You know, I, I'm there to – the way I see it is I, I'm an entertainer, and every time I have a fight, I'm basically putting on, you know, a show for the fans. So that's that's all I really concentrate on. And as long as I keep doing that, then eventually I'll have a, uh, a title shot. UFC 162 happened not too long ago in which Anderson Silva finally lost. I wanted to get what were your thoughts uh, on that night where he eventually did lose. Here's the thing. I am a, still a big fan of Anderson Silva. You know, everybody has brain farts, and, uh, you know, once in a while, I feel like maybe he just got, you know, uh, his head just got in the clouds a little too much. Uh, the guy's still an amazing fighter. And I have a uh, tremendous respect for him and his skills. He will definitely probably come back and, uh, you know, show the world what he's made of. I know we're a few days before the weigh-ins on Friday, but how's your weight doing? Well, being it's, you know, short notice fight, luckily, uh, just before I got the call, I just got done doing a 10-day detox, uh, basically yeah. raw food diet. Raw food diet, basically fruits and vegetables I eat like a deer. Uh, so... You know, my weight was pretty high. I'm about, you know, 15 pounds over, which is about normal right now. Uh, you know, shortly this week, it'll come off slowly but surely. And, uh, you know, hopefully I have a good weigh-in. Once again, you're fighting in Seattle on another UFC on Fox undercard. And I was wondering if there's anything that you wanted to do in Seattle that you didn't get a chance to the last time you were there. Well, last time, I had a pretty good time in Seattle. I mean, it, Seattle people, they're, they're a little different than Michigan people, but uh, <laughs> all in all, it was, a, it was a good time. I went to Bruce Lee's, uh, Bruce Lee and his son's uh, grave site. I, you know, walked basically everywhere there. Um, it was a little cold there when I was, the last time I was there. Now it's going to be nice and warm. I'll be able to see the site, get the job done, and Give me some, some, uh, they're the home of Starbucks coffee, so I'll stop back at that, uh, the original Starbucks coffee shop. Also, on the same night you were in Seattle fighting on Fox, your opponent on Saturday, Eve Edwards, also fighting. I know you took this fight on short notice, but in my opinion, he stole the knockout of the night award away from you that night, and I wonder, did that have anything to do with you signing on to fight Eve? You know, here's the thing, there's a story behind it, there's, uh, you know, it's, it's good for the papers and stuff like, you know, for the news and stuff. I want my money back. <laughs> uh, you know, but, you know, the UFC takes care of their guys. You know, they they uh, they took care of me. They You know, even though I didn't get, like, you know, the 70 grand or whatever it was that night. But uh, this fight has the potential for for getting that, for making the knockout of the night or the fight of the night or something, you know, spectacular. You know, Eve Edwards is, in my eyes, me, but way older. <laughs> You know, he, he fights, he's real fluent, he puts his hands and feet together, he's, uh, you know, he's really good on, on the ground, he, he's just an all-around uh, fighter, it's just he's, you know, he's, uh, he's got experience on me, definitely, he's, he's an old man, so, <laughs> you know, I get to uh, see what the young bucks has to, uh, has, what, what I got for him. And what will you have to do against him to be successful on Saturday night? Well, I have to punch and kick him more times in the face when he punches and kicks me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I like that strategy. That's a good one. Like you said, he's a veteran of the sport. He's done a lot. I believe he's fought over 50 times professionally. What would a victory over a veteran like that mean for your career? Oh, it's, it's a huge opportunity for me, you know, to uh, kind of put my name a little more out there and, uh be the guy that's been in the sport for so long. You know, I have tremendous respect for him. I think he's been in the fighting in the UFC since 2001. I wasn't even graduated from high school in 2001. You know, so it, it's, you know, I grew up watching him, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a, you know, I'm very thankful for the opportunity that UFC gave me. And in the main event of the night, you'll be fighting on UFC on Fox 8. Demetrius Money Mouse Johnson will go up against John Braga to defend his flyweight title. I was wondering who you had in that one. Well, that's the little guys, right? The really tiny guys? Yes, the really tiny guys, the 125 yeah, guys. Yeah, Demetrius. Demetrius, uh, definitely, uh, definitely a little guy, yeah.
he, he's got it. He's, the, the big thing about those the, the small weight classes, it's nonstop action. Those guys go at a pace that you, you know the bigger weights can't just, just can't keep up with. I love it. I gotta ask you this because I know we're both uh, not only Michigan natives but Detroit natives. I wonder if you've been following our Detroit Tigers at all this season. No, I haven't. <laughs> I've never been a fan of like I don't know baseball. I can't even throw a ball. I'm terrible at it. So I try to stay away from it as much as possible. Okay. All right. But I was go, just wondering if you've been keeping go, up with go that. Tigers. Go Tigers. All right. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I gotta get you out of here with this question here, Darren. We know that you are an amateur zombie hunter and you like all things zombie related. And World War Z came out uh, a couple weeks ago and I wonder if you had a chance to see that movie and what you thought of it. I thought it was an awesome movie. I really liked it. I got a couple friends that uh, didn't really like how the zombies like didn't eat people's faces and stuff. They just bit them and then ran away and got another one. Um, but I thought it was, I thought it was like, you know, how it kind of could happen, I guess, you know, take over the whole entire world and just, you know, so fast, but I'm definitely ready. I just did a three gun shoot, uh, yesterday at Livingston Gun Club. So, uh, you know, getting my skills, skills, uh, sharpened just in case. All right, he is Darren Cruikshank. You can follow him on Twitter at Cruikshank155. He is fighting Eve Edwards this Saturday. You can watch his fight on FX as part of the UFC on Fox 8 undercard. Darren, thanks for coming back on the show. We love having you on, and good luck on Saturday night against Eve Edwards. Thank you. Thanks, God. Thanks uh, for having me on the show. Try to have me on after. Boom, so when I get this knockout bonus, we can talk about it, and, uh, yeah, let's do it. Once again, that was UFC fighter Darren Cruikshank right here on Beyond the Cage, presented by Intimidation Clothing.